Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. This is Marilyn Gale. Listen, guys, I'm going to bring a story about Angela Bassett and what she experienced uh, in her childhood. She experienced sexual violation, and it was devastating. Prior to hosting the Rape Foundation's actual brunch, annual brunch, Angela Bassett opened up about her own painful experience with sexual violation. The actress revealed that when she was a young girl, her mother's boyfriend entered her room one night while she was sleeping and fondled her breasts. Fortunately, it wasn't a complete assault. It was fondling, but it was devastating enough for a child who's 12 or 13. Bassett said she was grateful that her mother quickly believed her and took swift action. Thankfully, to have a mother who could tell as soon as light broke that this happened and for her to expel him, that she heard me, she believed me, and did something about it. I think it was so empowering for me as a young teen, as a young woman. As the mother of a teenage boy and twin girls who she said would often tussle as toddlers, Bassett explained that she began teaching her child the importance of respecting boundaries at age two. I started that early because of experiences with friends and I know that they would be in situations one day. Bassett continued when a girl says no, both to him and to her. She means no, back up. She has to say, come here, kiss me. A longtime supporter of Rape Foundation and co-host of the brunch, along with Bassett, was David Schwimmer. Eric McCormick offered his advice for parents grappling, I'm sorry, grappling with speaking to their children about sexual assault. We have a 12-year-old, and so the whole idea of consent over the last few years has been a conversation, McCormick said. I think it really does come down to um, talking about this with Gail, the founder of the director of the Rape Treatment Center and Stewart House UCLA the other day, about educating young men. I think it's, in, it's happening in the school's some of them in our school, kids' school, but in terms of advice, I think the biggest thing to have to work on with everybody is self-esteem and being strong enough to say no, to call for help. Nobody has the right to abuse you. Held on the lawn of a private Beverly Hills estate, the brunch highlighted stories of sexual assault survivors and raised funds for the Rape Treatment Center and Stewart House of UCLA Santa Monica Medical Center. Ahead of the event, Elizabeth Olson, a frequent volunteer at Stewart House UCLA, described her experience working with teenage and child victims. It's incredible, Olson told reporters. I go the same time weekly so I can end up seeing the same kids over and over again and you just get to become hopefully a happy part of their week while they're seeking therapy and treatment and we just get to hopefully force them to have fun even if they're teenagers and we hope that they enjoy you. You want them to enjoy the experience and especially for the young ones, you want them while they're dealing with something that no child should go through and is, uh, go through this and is beyond traumatic that I could not comprehend. You just want them to feel like a kid. So that's really what you do there as a volunteer. And I just feel very lucky that I've been doing this for a couple of years now. Now, guys, many don't know this about me, not even a lot of family members, but um, I was a rape victim advocate. And it was 
very difficult because at the time I was working nine, ten hours, I was uh, drained, and then you would get a call. You never knew, of course, when you would get a call. You would meet the police at the hospital, and I felt so, so, oh, I, I felt for the victim in a lot of ways. Number one, they have been violated, and then... They have to tell the story over and over and relive that. They have to tell the policeman. They have to tell the doctor. They have to tell the examiner, whether it's male or female, of the details. They have to go through an examination of the rape uh, kit. And I'm telling you, uh, we as an advocate, we didn't ask questions. We just made ourselves available and offered that if she wanted to relay something, feel free to do that. But we didn't ask questions. We would sit back and let the police and the doctor take care of that. And we would just take the information down so we could see what resources, other resources we had available. Uh, one case in, well, I let me just say this. Very seldom did I talk about the experiences. Of course, I did not say the names because that would be breaking the code of uh, HIPAA. But I would keep that to myself because I thought in some way if I said something, I would be violating their trust. Although, like I said, I never said any names. But I I just didn't feel like that was that was something I should do. But you know what? When I look back, guys... It's okay to share experiences as long as you don't give private information. It's okay because you may be able to help someone else. You may be able to convince someone else, call the police, um, go seek help, um, tell your parents, you know, tell someone, a trusted counselor. Uh, tell someone about this abuse. Now, I one thing I wanted to say about Angela Bassett's mom. I'm so glad she believed her. Because, like she said, that empowered her and that supported her. So to get help, I think... She could process that better having her mom by her side. Now, I think it's marriage boot camp or something like that. I just saw an episode on television and it was one of the prior um, basketball wives. I can't remember who she was, but she was uh, divorced from her husband. She had kids and uh, but she was telling her her mother and her father was at the boot camp and she was telling of uh, the experience that a family member had violated her. And when she told her mom and dad, her dad basically called her a liar. And you know, that has stayed with her by what I see on, saw on the program. That has stayed with her all her life because her dad, who was supposed to protect her as a father, even if he couldn't protect her, uh, he didn't know about the the um, the actual assault. He could have still supported her, called the police, and did what he had to do. She also blamed her mom because she felt like her mom knew about this. I don't know. This is what she said. So whether her mom knew or not, or whether she might have thought her mom knew about it. But uh, that was just, I think, the first episode that I saw. So I'm not really sure. Maybe further down the line, it'll she'll have some breakthroughs and the family will have breakthroughs. But what I'm trying to say is to have your parents uh, support and not think that you are a liar. Because that's why a lot of people do not report this. Is because they think that no one's going to believe them or 
it's a close person, a person that they're close to, uh, that's also close to the perpetrator. So they keep it under wrap. And guys, uh, I did put a video out. In fact, it was my first video on YouTube. Like Angela Bassett, it was not um, a complete assault. It wasn't, it was the attempt and, you know, uh, um, I, I, I fought off the person and then someone came, was coming in and you could hear the door open and they ran off. So I thank God for that. But you know what, guys, like I said in my video, I held that in because I knew I was very close to the perpetrators, the person they were with. I called no names and uh, because there's still people that are close to the perpetrator, although he's dead now. So my intent is not to hurt anyone. But did you know what, guys? I wish I had said that instead of holding it in for many years. I'm glad that Angela Bassett told her mom. And I'm, and the reason why I'm bringing this out, guys, is because I want anyone listening if this is, if someone is violating you, touching you, they they don't even have to, uh, it doesn't have to be a full assault. If they're touching you in any way that's not like a pat on the back, congratulations for accomplishing something. If it's unwanted attention, and even if you're in your mind, you don't know any better. If you're, if you, if, and I hope that this age group is not listening, because this is really, um, you know, a, a little bit uh, to to think it's okay and natural. I think you would have to be really young, and no one has told you. Now, this person is not supposed to touch you there, and this person is not to 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 say this and. You know, and, and, and I hope that whoever's listening and this is happening to you, tell your parent, tell a trusted counselor at school so this can be reported because too many people are getting away with this and it could have been very more devastating for Angela if the if her mom did not believe her and allowed this person to continue to come in her life and with a possibility of trying to be alone and finish the deed that he didn't finish so guys um like i said in in working as a sex um a rape victim advocate I remember, and, and this was uh, at least eight years ago or so, maybe not quite, but around that. Um, I remember one victim who, she was married to the guy. He was estranged. They were estranged. So what I'm saying is, if... If a wife says no to her husband and he goes ahead and, and, and do what he wants to do, that's rape. That's a sex, sexual assault. Because you cannot, no means no. Whether you're married, you're dating, whatever, no means no. So a husband, and a lot of people don't believe this, a lot of cultures don't believe that this. That a husband can rape a wife, sexually assault a wife. Yes. And this happens to men also, that they're violated, you know, they're violated, uh, sometimes women, sometimes men. But the men seem to not report it. 
like the women reported. I don't, I think the men are like, you know, many women do. They feel ashamed. They feel like, uh, that makes them less of a man or less of a woman. And when we did get a call, when there was a call about a man being sexually, uh, violated, then it was, uh, the men would go out and take that call. Because I don't, I think I would have, Turned that call down. I would have wanted a man to take that call because I think the man can talk to the men more freely. So maybe I'm wrong, but I I would want I wouldn't want the guy to feel no more uncomfortable than he did already. But I think that's why men don't call because they feel like this is not happening to me. You know, it can't be happening to me. But it does, guys. It happens to the men, women, girls, boys, the elderly. I remember before I was even a teenager, it was an elderly elderly woman in her 70s. Went to take out the trash. It was dark. I don't know how late it was. And she, and she was sexually assaulted. She was raped. So guys, rape. I know you know this, but let me just repeat it for those who don't. Rape is not a sexual act in itself. It's control. And... I don't know, guys. I, it just, when I, when I was reading the article about Angela Bassett, it did bring back memories. It did bring back the bad feelings. And that was my reasoning for even making a YouTube channel because I wanted to purge some things. I wanted to have a voice. I had not said this. And then when I said, when I mentioned it, there was one particular person that didn't believe me. By that time, I was an adult. And I'll just keep the rest to myself because it, it, it almost got physical in my mind. I didn't say anything, but the anger was there. How dare you call me a liar? So anyway, guys, I don't want to go off into my experience, but I just want to encourage anyone who's experiencing Anything that's remotely close to what I'm talking about, tell someone. So this person, and if it's happening to you, tell someone. So so uh, the authorities can come in, so you can press charges, so you can put this person behind bars. And do not feel sorry for the perpetrator. They didn't feel sorry for you when they were violating you. They didn't They didn't think about, okay, I'm ruining this person's childhood. She's going to grow up all her life with low self-esteem, not trusting men, or he's not trusting women. Tell it. I am not a snitch. I don't believe in being a snitch, but tell this one. Don't let the perpetrator get away with this because a lot of them are getting away with this. You hear stories about, um, you know, men continuously or women continuously violating people all through their until they get, you know, 15, 16, 17, and then sometimes longer than that. So, guys, that's what I have right now. I just want to bring and in, in, in bring this story out about Angela Bassett. And I, I do love that she brought this out about herself. Because sometimes people want to tell other people's stories, but they don't want to tell their own. So I thank God for Angela Bassett for, for, for telling her experience and, and and sharing that she told her mom and the best news of all about that whole situation is her mom believed her. And I thank God for that, her mom. So guys, I'm ending this right now. Uh, thank you to all the subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe yet. Uh, please do so now. Hit that notification bell and I'll be back with another video or podcast and 
Everyone have a great night. Good night.